All right, folks, what we're going to move on to next after now that we understand the properties of logarithms and we also know how to solve exponential equations using logarithms, now we're going to move on to solving logarithmic equations, which is basically just kind of a, an extension of what you already know how to do in solving exponential equations. As a reminder, let's say that we have a 3.7 to the 2x power is equal to 19 and we want to solve for x here. This is an exponential equation because there is an x in the exponent uh, of, a, of a base. And that the way that we solve for this x is we have to get rid of the exponential base and we do that with a logarithm. We are simply reviewing here something you already know how to do. To cancel this 3.7 we apply a logarithm so we do log base 3.7 to both sides, log base 3.7 to both sides. That's going to cancel this exponential base. And because of the expo exponent to multiplication property of logarithms, this 2x is simply going to come down and be set free from its base. Now we have over here, we have log base 3.7 of 19. And so we have uh, set the exponent free uh, at the cost of making the other side a logarithm. Now we would just divide by 2 on both sides and we would have x is equal to log base 3.7 of 19 all divided by 2 which you could do in a calculator. You could do log 19 divided by log 3.7 then divide that value by 2 and you would have your value of x. We're just reviewing, solving an exponential equation. And the reason that I'm reviewing that is so that you can then understand how to solve a logarithmic equation. So here's what I have for you. I'm going to throw a couple examples up here. Let's say that we have log base 4 of x plus 1 is equal to 3. Now, this x plus 1 inside the logarithm is tied up. It is, it is held captive or prisoner by this logarithm. And so we can't get to this x plus 1 without first getting rid of the logarithm. Now, in a, a couple, about a week ago, you learned how to cancel an exponential base using a logarithm. Well, here's what's interesting is that relationship works the other way around. Just like subtraction cancels addition and addition cancels subtraction, similarly, multiplication cancels division and division cancels multiplication. In the very same way, a logarithm cancels an exponential base, so an exponential base cancels a logarithm. So what we're going to do here is we are going to basically turn both of these things into exponents. We are going to apply an exponential base down here. And that expo exponential base is going to be equal to whatever the base of the logarithm is. So this logarithm has a base of 4. So watch what we're going to do. We're going to do a giant 4 on both sides. And what we now basically have is 4 to the power of log base 4 of x plus 1 and 4 to the power of 3. So this is essentially now 4 to the power of log base 4 of x plus 1 is equal to 4 to the power of 3. Okay, so what we've done is algebraically we have, we have turned both, of the, both sides of the equation into exponents giving each one the same exponential base, showing that log base 4 of x plus 1 is still equal to 3. Now here's the interesting thing, is if I have 5 to the power of log base 5, those cancel each other out. And so what's going to happen here is this 4 to the power of log base 4, those are going to cancel and all you're going to have is x plus 1 is equal to 4 to the third power. Now, 4 to the third power, that's 64. So we have x plus 1 is equal to 64. 
Then we subtract 1 from both sides, and we get x is equal to 63. Okay? So basically, the way that we solve logarithmic equations is by applying an exponential base that is equal to whatever the base of the logarithm is, which would result in the canceling of the logarithm and the exponent exponential base on one side. Okay? All right, so let's try another one. Okay, for this one, you're going to need a scientific calculator. Okay, so why don't you have one of those ready? You might have needed a scientific calculator for that last example if you didn't know what 4 to the third power was, but I, I, I already knew that one. All right, so let's see here. We have the natural log of 3x is equal to 2.5. All right, what is the base of the natural log? Well, the natural log is equal to log base e, correct? So the base of this logarithm is e. So the way we're going to cancel this natural log is we're going to do e to the power of. And so on this side, we're also going to do e to the power of. And so now what we have is we have e to the power of natural log of 3x is equal to e to the power of 2.5. Here, the e to the power of natural log, that's going to cancel. And all we have left is 3x. So now 3x is equal to e to the power of 2.5. Then, to solve for x, we just divide by 3 on both sides, and x is equal to e to the 2.5 power divided by 3, which we can do in a scientific calculator or a graphing calculator, if that's what you happen to be using. So we're going to do e, that's gonna, we're going to hit second, and then the ln button. So we get e to the power of 2.5. Now, don't forget to close the parenthesis on your exponent. We'll close the parenthesis, divided by 3, and we get 4.0608. So x is equal to 4.0608. Okay, that was a good one. Let's try another one. Okay, this one will not require the use of a scientific calculator because in this case we have two variables. We have an x and a y, which makes it a function. Anytime you have an equation that has two variables, if it's one equation with two variables, that's a function. There is no solution for a single equation with two variables. It's called an undefined system. Okay, so this is a function. So, but let's say that we're being told to solve for y, solve for the variable y. Well, the y is tied up inside of a logarithm. So somehow or another, we need to get rid of this logarithm. Well, if we're going to get rid of that logarithm, how do we get rid of log base e? That's ln, log base e. We're going to use an e. So we're going to do e to the power of this is equal to e to the power of what? Are we going to put an e here and an e here? No, we are not. This is e to the power of the entire other side. And so what this now becomes is e to the power of the natural log of y is equal to e to the power of that whole thing, x squared plus 3. That entire thing has to go into the, the one exponent of e. Okay. And so now over here, it's going to cancel the logarithm, and we're going to bring the y down, and y is equal to e to the power of x squared plus 3. Okay? All right, let's do another one. All right, you're going to need a scientific calculator for this one. Look, we have an equation with only a single variable. Therefore, we should be able to solve for this variable. Now, this is a big mess here. Look, we got minus 7 on here. We got times 20 up here. All right, the reason I want to show you this particular problem is that it's important that you understand that this problem right here you cannot cancel this logarithm. You can't cancel that logarithm until after you cancel all the stuff around the logarithm. So you have to get rid of everything else. You have to cancel this minus 7 first. You also have to cancel this 20. And I recommend canceling this first and this. In fact, I have personally, I have an informal way of solving algebraic equations, I typically do the order of operations backwards. So I do my all, get rid of all my addition and subtraction first, then I get rid of all my uh, multiplication and division, then I handle my exponents, which are logarithms. Logarithms are exponents. Okay, so let's get rid of this first. We'll add 7 to both sides, cancel, and now we're, we'll have 20 log base 5 of 2x minus 3 is equal to 60. 
then we will divide by 20. I want to get rid of this 20. I can't mess with this logarithm until I get rid of everything around it. And if I divide by 20 on this side, I have to divide by 20 on this side. And now I have log base 5 of 2x minus 3 is equal to 60 divided by 20. Well, that's 3. Now, to cancel this logarithm, I have to, I have to apply an exponential base of 5 to cancel a log base 5. So I'm going to put a giant 5 here, and I'll put a giant 5 over here. So I got 5, and you can put a little to the power of if that makes you feel better. So I got 5 to the power of this and 5 to the power of this. So now, 5 to the power of log base 5 cancels, and all I have left is 2x minus 3. That's going to be equal to 5 to the power of 3. And now, what's 5 to the third power? That's 125. We can do that in our calculator. Okay, let's see here, what's log? We'll go 5 to the third power, 125. So now we have 2x minus 3 is equal to 125. Then we're going to add 3 to both sides. And we get 2x is equal to 128. Sorry, that's a little messy there. 128. Then divide by 2. And I get x is equal to 60. Four. And there's my solution. Okay? It just takes a little patience to get rid of all the stuff around it, then cancel the logarithm, then solve whatever remains. Okay? Let's try a couple more. All right, here's another one. This one's got uh, some addition and some multiplication. So why don't you pause the video, try this one out on your own, and then I'll solve it. All right, so hopefully you had a chance to try this one out. Uh, hopefully you got an answer. Hopefully you didn't get caught up too much. Well, let's see if you want to. If you weren't sure how to do it, maybe do it along with me one step at a time. What do you think the first thing is that we should do here? Yep, we're going to get rid of this plus 9. We're going to subtract 9 here and subtract 9 here, leaving us with 8 natural log of 5x plus 2 equals 33 minus 9. That's 24. What do you think I'm going to do next? Remember, I can't I can't cancel this logarithm until that 8 is gone. And what is this 8 doing to this logarithm? It's multiplying. So how do we undo multiplication? With division. So we're going to divide by 8 on both sides. Cancel. Divide by 8. We've got the natural log of 5x plus 2 is equal to, what's 24 divided by 8? Well, that's 3. Now we're at the point where the only thing on this side of the equation is the logarithm. Once the logarithm is alone, all by itself, this stuff right here is inside of the logarithm. That doesn't count. That's a part of the logarithm. Once the logarithm is alone on one side of the equation, now we can cancel the logarithm with an exponential base. What is the base of the natural log? Well, that's log base e, right? So we can cancel this with an exponential base of e. So we'll do an e to the power of here and an e to the power of here. We're going to cancel the natural log. We now have x, 5x plus 2 is equal to e to the power of 3. So e to the third power. Now we can subtract 2 from both sides. And we have 5x is equal to e to the third power minus 2. Then divide by 5 on both sides. Divide by 5. You could leave it like this, or you can do it in your calculator. We'll have e to the power of 3, close a parenthesis. So you'll have parentheses on here, probably a power symbol there. And then minus 2. Then I'm going to press Enter now. See, if I, if I type this in the calculator, if I do e to the power of parenthesis 3, close, and then do minus 2, if I then hit the divided symbol and, and type in 5, you know what this calculator is going to do? It's going to do 2 divided by 5 first. Then whatever that number is, it's going to subtract it from e to the power of 3. So I need to make sure that the calculator does this first, because that's the numerator. Then divide by 5. So one way I can do that is after I type in minus 2, I can press Enter, get a number, then divide it by 5. Divided by 5, Enter, and I get x is equal to 3.617 is my approximate value of x. Let's just do another one, maybe one or two more. This one's kind of an easy one. 
Note again, you will not need a scientific calculator because we have two variables. So we're going to solve for y, but we're going to leave it as a function. You go ahead and try it right now. All right, so how am I going to get this y set free here? It's tied up by this natural log. How can I cancel the natural log? With an e. So e to the power of here, e to the power of here. That's going to cancel the natural log over here, and we get y is equal to e to the power of 3x squared. And you might say, uh, well, Mr. Ryan, is it okay for that x squared to be uh, this 2, this exponent of 2? Can I have an exponent inside of an exponent? Absolutely. That's okay. That is acceptable. Okay? So here is your function. This would be your, your answer to solving for y up here. Let's just try maybe one more. All right, once again, we are not going to need a scientific calculator. We are not going to solve for a value. We have a y over here and we have an x over here. And let's say that we are trying to solve for y. All right, well, we've got to do uh, something before we can mess with this logarithm. We got this divided by 7 here. So we've got to get rid of that divided by 7. The way we're going to get rid of the 7 is we're going to multiply by 7 on both sides. If I multiply by 7 on this side, it'll cancel the 7. Then I'll bring down the log base 4 of y plus 2 is equal to 2x times 7 is 14x. Now I have the logarithm all by itself. This logarithm has a base of 4, so the way I'm going to cancel the logarithm is by applying an exponential base of 4. So I'm going to do 4 to the power of over here. I'm going to do 4 to the power of over here. That's going to cancel the logarithm. It's going to leave me with y plus 2 is equal to 4 to the power of 14x. Lastly, over here I got y plus 2. I got to subtract 2 from both sides. And y is equal to, now this, this 2 cannot be subtracted from this 4. These are not like terms. Remember, like terms are common bases, meaning the base is identical. It's either the same number or the same letter. And it has to be to the same power. This is to the power of 1. This is to the power of 14x. Because they are not to the same power, they are not like terms. They are also not the same base. This is a 4 and this is a 2. Therefore, these cannot be combined. Okay? So we're just going to write 4 to the 14x power. And then we're just going to tack the minus 2 on the end. And this is our final answer. And we're done. All right, that's all I have for you. There's just, all you got to do now is just try a whole bunch of them. I'll probably give you like maybe 20 or 30 of these. And you just work through them, and I promise you, after you've done about the 10th one, they're going to be a piece of cake. Some of them you'll solve with a final answer that's a number. Some of them you'll solve where the final answer is a function, okay? And I'll be there to help you along. Uh, but this is, all, this is all I really want you to learn today is solving logarithmic equations. And it's just as easy as you, you see in this video. Just one video today and, uh, and you'll be good to go. I will see you in class and good luck.